squared because we're dealing with area this time. Question number four is about this topic. It's about interior sum of angles. So this is to do with polygons. They don't need to be regular polygons. It's telling you that a pentagonal, so this should be five sides, a pentagonal shaped garden has certain angles. The angles, again, this doesn't have to be to scale 90 degrees. Also, we have 95 degrees. Also, we have 105 degrees. And we have the final one that we're given is 90 degrees. So if it's a pentagon, we know there is a missing side here. So we could label that. We could just call it X or something. Or Y or whatever we want to call it. Okay, so let's do the rest of this thing. So we are told to find the missing angle. So whenever dealing with a problem like this, we need to figure out how many degrees there should be in the middle of this. So in finding out how many degrees there should be in this, one method to answer this question is to divide the shape into triangles. So we start at one vertex and we just draw a line to a couple of the others. These lines that we draw should not cross through each other. So here you can see that we have one, two, three triangles. Now if each and every triangle always has 180 degrees, no matter whether it looks like this or even if it's a crazy little triangle. We know if there's three of them in this pentagon, there should be 180 times three, which gives us 540 degrees in the entire thing. So everything should add up, everything should add up to 540 degrees. So let's figure out how many degrees we've got so far. We've got 90, 95, so that's the 90, that's the 95, we've got 105, and also we have another 90 over there. So if we add all of these up, 0, 1, 10, 19, 28, carry the 2, 1 and 2 is 3, so we already have 380 degrees in there. We need the missing one, so we know that the 380 plus whatever the value of x is should equal 540 degrees. Okay, so this is a one-step equation. We subtract 380 from both sides. So 3. When we do that, the 380s cancel out. We're left with x equals... And by doing the subtracting, we should have 160 degrees. So that's our answer. So the missing angle is 160. So if we've labeled x inside there, then we are in our own rights to write x equals 160 degrees. And that gives us the answer for number four. Okay, so number five is asking us for the mean, median, mode, range, and outlier of a whole bunch of numbers. Now, sometimes it will ask you for the best measure of central tendency. When it asks you that, it's just really asking for the best type of average. So let me write the numbers. We've got 12. Actually, you know what? Let me write the numbers in size order. So the smallest number that we have here let me just select the brush. The smallest number that we have here is number 7. So we've got 7. We've also got 8. We've also got 12 and 14. 12, 14. We've also got 18, 21 and 25. 18, 21 and 25. And... The next number that we've got is 89. So let's just count. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. On the page, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that's good. We got them all. 
So the things that we are asked for, grab a thing, we are asked for the mean. So in doing the mean, we need to add them all up. So we do seven plus eight plus 12 plus 14 plus 18 plus 21 plus 25 plus 89 and then we would divide all of this by however many we have which we just counted and that is 8 so I just grabbed a calculator let's do this quickly 7 plus 8 plus 12 plus 14 18 21 25 89 so we end up getting an answer of 194 over 8 we still need to do this division so if I divide this by 8 the answer I get is 24.25 in this particular case there's no units we were just given actual numbers if we were asked for the average of heights and if the, each of these equaled a height then we would put inches or feet or whatever it was Next one that we need to do is mode. So as we look through all of these numbers, it doesn't look as though any number repeats itself. So in this case, there is no mode. So each number above here only appears once. There is no repeating number. The next thing that we need to do is the median. Now the median number is where we arrange them in order smallest to biggest and then we just cancel through them so let me choose a different color so we cross the first and the last remember this only works if we have them in size order we cross the second and the second to last we cross the next and the next and this time we happen to have two if there was only one in the middle then that would be our answer for the median however there's two so what we've got to do when there's two is we need to add them together 14 plus 18 and then we divide by 2 so we basically get the middle number whatever would be right in between these two so 14 plus 18 is 32 and divide by 2 that gives us 16 so again this is our work so we should really have this on a page near our answer for the median however if I just write median up there whoever is scoring this in the real test should know where it is um, and so here I can just write my answer of 16. The next thing that we're asked for is the range. So the range we need to remember is the maximum number, the biggest minus the minimum, max minus min. So in this case we can see because we've laid them in order, that would be 89 subtract 7, which gives us an answer of 82. That's our range. And the very last question is talking about an outlier so an outlier is the number that is either much 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 bigger than the rest of the group of numbers or much smaller it's the one that kind of sticks out so in this case you know 89 is quite a distance away from the rest of the numbers which are all kind of within 20 points of each other 89 is much much higher so I would say that the outlier is 89 it doesn't ask for reasons uh, for the outlier or anything like that, but if it did, then we, you would need to explain that. Okay. At number six. So number six is saying that you have five red marbles, you have three yellow marbles, and you have four, in fact they're not marbles, they're socks, you have four green socks. All right, so A, tells us that or asks us what is the probability of selecting a red or green so the probability of selecting a red or a green so basically there's two ways to do this the first way is to figure out the total so I would actually write the total number of socks the total number of socks when we add them 5 plus 3 is 8 plus 4 is 12 so the total is 12 so we should really have an out of 12 denominator. So the probability of red or green, well we just have five red and four green, so that would make nine over 12. 
just let's check again, red or green, five red, four green, so that's nine, and that's nine out of 12. That's the probability of choosing either red or green. And we can simplify this, uh, divide by three, that would give us three on top, and divide by three on the bottom, that would give us four over there. So if it doesn't say fraction, decimal, or percent, we could just leave it as a fraction. If it asks you for a percent, you would need to do three divided by four, and then times that by 100. Um, and also, three fourths we might already know as 75%. But really, this is the correct answer. The other way of doing A is to look at the probability of the red happening, and then because it says or, we add the probability of the green happening. So in this case, the red would be 5 out of 12 because there's 5 reds, and we would add the probability of green, which is 4 out of 12. And so this still gives us our 9 over 12, which can be simplified to 3 over 4. The key thing here is that with the probability that we're dealing with right now, this word all really means that we have to add. So we're either adding the numerators to give us the 9, so this 9 comes from 5 plus 4, or we're actually looking at the first thing, the probability of the first, first thing, probability of red, and we're adding it to the probability of green. And we, we can handle them separately. All right, so B. B is asking us for the probability of two yellow socks without replacement. So the probability of yellow and yellow, however, no replacement. So this is two things happening, and no replacement really means that this is um, uh, dependent events that we're dealing with. The first pick affects the probability of the second pick. And of course, two things happening, this is a compound event. So the probability of pulling a yellow the first time round is three out of 12. But after you get a yellow that first time, now we only have two yellows left and 11 total socks. So the second pick, the probability of it being a yellow is two out of 11. And what we need to remember to do is that whenever we have a compound event, so with the word and, and two events happening, we need to multiply. So in this case, when we do three over 12 times by two over, sorry, three over 12 times by two over 11, we would end up with six over, and then 11 12s, either you know it or you could break it up, 10, 11, 10 12s are 120 plus another, 112, which is 132. Okay, now we could simplify this as well. We could figure out 6 into 132, and we could, or we could do this using a calculator, six to, sorry, 132 divided by 6, to figure out if it goes in perfectly, and it does 22 times. So if we were to just divide by 6 and divide by 6, we would get an answer of 1 over... 22. So that would be our answer. So we can box it up, make it nice and clear, but this is the answer for B where the first sock isn't replaced. Okay, C. So C is asking for the probability of selecting a yellow and a yellow, the same thing, but this time round, if the first pick, the first pick is replaced. 